So, let's see. I think I already uh, sent the slide to you. You can actually uh, uh, look your slide in your slide. Okay, hard ECD anyway. So this is the outline of the hard ECD. So first, why hard ECD? And uh, what's basic concept theory uh, approach behind this uh, for today's talk? Then I try to, that you can know what means the hearty, hearty, okay? Health, healthy city, energy uh, sensitive city, AI driven city, resilient, tourism, uh, tourist liking and uh, yearning cities. All these uh, six components uh, have been uh, my main uh, research targets uh, during my, uh, let's say, uh, research career. I think uh, there's more, maybe other different aspects, but I, I think as a, a systematic uh, uh, thinking, especially about my own uh, research, I think this is one uh, one kind of summary. So I will, uh, let's show you uh, one by one. So let me just uh, I think choose some. Why I propose a uh, hearty city, this concept. You can look at my uh, background here. Uh, actually, uh, in 2020, I organized one, I think the first internet conference on COVID-19 pandemic, especially in the context of transport. Uh, why I, I had to do uh, this conference? Because I uh, was appointed by the WCTRs. Uh, world uh, Conference on uh, Transport Research Society. I think it's the biggest society uh, in this, in terms of not the number of people, but in terms of the, let's say, number of uh, countries uh, belong to this conference. And uh, in April, I think in April 2020, I was appointed by the conference, by the, the WCDR, to be uh, the co-chair uh, as of the COVID-19 Task Force. And within this task force, uh, by the way, today, I will not introduce some uh, details, some formulas, equation, modeling, et cetera. I want to introduce some concept, uh, I think it's quite uh, important for uh, all transport uh, students. So uh, in this uh, COVID-19 task force, uh, our main task is to understand how to understand the impact of COVID-19. Uh, you see, we are now online. This is one of the impacts and how to address the impacts uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic and also after. After we have a recovery and also more post-pandemic, uh, say, say, transformation for our transport support society. So as one of the efforts, we uh, I will publish actually a, a book uh, together, of course, as a joint effort with all my uh, colleagues. Uh, it's called the Transport transportation amid pandemics, license learned from COVID-19. This book will publish this month. And I'm uh, uh, today, I think uh, they will send me the, all the PDF, the whole book. I will check and uh, we will release soon. It covers uh, six uh, chapter, uh, sorry, parts, including uh, uh, six uh, chapters, very long. And uh, But uh, many contents, I will not introduce in detail because of limited time, but we have some, well, I'm gonna actually, if you look at this is a book, uh, I'm the, 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 the first uh, top author to, to, to edit and write this book. We learned a lot of lessons from this pandemic. But when I summarize all uh, uh, these research findings, uh, policy recommendations, whatever, I, I, I gave a, let's say one very, one sentence summary about what we have learned. So what we have learned, you can say, oh, we need to make a, a pandemic resilient city, whatever, right? But if you can look at all those things, many things we need to care about uh, those, uh, let's say socially weak people, we need to pay attention to those issues they mentioned, we need to pay attention to job, many things. The one summary, I, 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 I Tried, but I think this is the only uh, important 
one sentence from this book. We as human beings should be kinder to nature. Why? Because the COVID-19 caused by some unhealthy interaction between people and human and nature. And that each of us should be kinder to each other. Why? Because we have uh, so many uh, bad uh, uh, kind of uh, behavior and maybe attitudes toward across country, between country, and from people to people. During pandemic, you, I think you have uh, so many uh, different stories, but I think that, uh, we, we really suffer a lot just because we don't really care about other people, okay? And this is common to all, I think, uh, uh, human activity and human, uh, let's say, uh, not only during the pandemic, but also during the whole course of our human history. And, but uh, this is uh, uh, quite, I think, uh, deep. But I tried to find some uh, better world, but uh, I couldn't. So I, uh, then I gave it kind of. Then, in this regard, what, then I tried to think about what I have been uh, doing my, for my own research career. What I have, uh, uh, let's say, been done and how I can share something maybe important to go with you. Then I figured out, Yes, I can, uh, uh, if you look at, because I, my research is really interdisciplinary, and somebody says that transdisciplinary, whatever. And I should have been done so many research on these uh, six uh, components. So these uh, components, if you take the first, you know, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, character, yes, it is a, a heart ECD. And but these, uh, let's say, hard is here, of course, uh, for each part from healthy energy, AI, you can see the smart, AI driven and resilient uh, tourism like liking and earning, is all actually li linked with transport. And furthermore, uh, why I, I say, uh, let's say, I, I try to, uh, I have been done such a research in from in a, this interdisciplinary way, is because actually I have been promoting a proposed and for the promoting this uh, new uh, approach called the life order approach more than 10 years ago. So this life order approach say that, argue that everything, everything for uh, our policymaker, we actually, we, we need to care about two things. One, we care about nature. Another, we care about the human being. Life, right? We want to improve, enhance people's quality of life, no matter, where which the sector you belong to belong to. So human uh, in, improving improving human uh, let's say uh, let's say uh, quality of life, it's one of the common goals to every policy sector, right? Even for the private sector, even for education, same. Okay, then. I want to give you some two uh, t uh, t term, I say uh, terms uh, uh, common to uh, this lecture. One is for mobi mobility. Uh, mobility. Some people say, okay, mobility is some ability to move. It can save the different name, no problem. So this is another definition. But uh, uh, generally, if that's from the social science, uh, people define the mobility. Especially, uh, I'm also uh, let's say likes the definition based on my personal uh, experiences. In my personal understanding, understanding mobility include human movements, things movements, information mobility, right? capital money, and of course transport connect everything. Okay? so this is actually I I I discuss this concept in the in the book I published as a, a, a editor when I worked as a editor in chief of journal uh, Asian Trans Transport Studies, ATS. Uh, published by the East uh, uh, in East Asia uh, Transportation Study, uh, let's say Society uh, for Transportation Studies. So another one I, I mentioned about life or or the approach. I started research actually uh, since uh, 2010 uh, about, but I think even earlier. I think I remember I published the one the first uh, time used uh, research in. Uh, Transport research record in 2002, I think. If you look at that, uh, it is already uh, life oriented because we're talking about uh, how to uh, understand uh, time use behavior for supporting transport policy planning. But as a system, actually, 
I said I, I I proposed this one and and uh, as a research funding uh, from GSPS Japan uh, uh, Society for the Promotion of Science, and uh, I got a funding uh, for several funding and. Uh, so this research, actually, I think people, you are a student in transport research field. You know very well about the four-step model. Right? I think you, some of you may know the more advanced, uh, let's say, activist approaches. So these approaches actually are proposed for uh, supporting transport planning. Uh, in the beginning, we talk about the uh, trip-based. Right? So for taking a single trip, because we know that uh, uh, morning, and evening uh, peak hour is uh, one uh, key time period of traffic congestions. And gradually, we think we, we, we realize that actually trip is linked together. And those trips linked with activity. Then we, I think, especially since 1980s, activity-based approach become the most popular. But those act approach actually, they combine the travel uh, behavior research Together with time geography research, then then, then they developed so called like uh, let's say activist approach. But uh, personal for my as said, so for example, when we talk about let's say the to resolve transport problem, we need to uh, think about the, how to uh, position transport, on how to let's say uh, define the uh, land use planning, in the by linking with transport because they connect each other, right? But if you look at the, the much, let's say, much bigger uh, picture, all transport connected, especially during the pandemic, everybody recognized, oh, without transport, all life is so, so bad, right? Because of uh, stay at home, because we, we have to, let's say, uh, restrict our behavior. And all life, the quality is so bad. I think it's the first time for human being we realize all humans cannot uh, let's survive without transport, especially for the modern life, modern society. The transport connected every aspect of life. Right? But then we talk about we want to resolve trans problem. Why we only look at travel behavior? So do you feel strange? Right? That's the reason we need to look at how life determine uh, let's say transport how transport affect life then we want to, we need to let's say look at how to resolve transport problem from cross sector perspective based on interdisciplinary approach not just transport only approach right that's uh, let's say i can spend more time but i uh, just one single one uh, kind of a uh, concept okay one by one uh, because I have uh, about uh, just as a maximum, I take one, one hour. And uh, so, Hati, first, healthy city. Okay? Healthy city. Healthy city, everybody know, healthy, yeah, very important. Uh, pandemic is part of, uh, let's say, healthy uh, issue, right? Healthy issue. I started looking at, again, uh, in the big end of 2010, about, I, I, I think I implemented a uh, uh, nationwide uh, online survey uh, to look at how, uh, how to understand healthy health uh, really quite for your life. So health really quite life actually, uh, com, uh, let's say, uh, uh, have three major components. One we call it, let's, sorry, <clears throat> physical health. Another physical, okay, health. BMI, body mass index, right? We look at, okay, if you look at, uh, I think uh, Professor Chen looks at the very, very, very slim. I think he may do very, let's say, nice uh, physical exercise. I don't know. I feel a little bit fat <laughs> because I'm uh, just lazy. As, uh, let's say, stay along uh, for, the, for the whole day. So, physical health, very easy to understand. We have a two more house, one called a social house, another mental health. I think uh, uh, I'm hoping uh, everybody uh, is healthy. Uh, actually, uh, next month, I will uh, have a, a book, uh, a collaborative research with some private uh, firms to investigate mental health of students, especially during the pandemic. Uh, there are a lot of uh, suffering because of the pandemic. So we have three, uh, social health means that you have to, you have to try to communicate with other people. 
especially for elderly people. For elderly people, you know, in our country, uh, also in China, uh, we have so many elderly uh, population. So they are, uh, their health issues closely related to how they can communicate with other people after their retirement. Okay, three respect. So this quality of life actually helps influenced by not only uh, health promotion activity, but also by your lifestyle, eating, drinking, sleeping, right? Exercise, whatever. Control behavior also, because we, 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 we move every day uh, by transport. It's daily activity. And also your environment. So if you have a, a good environment, you can walk, otherwise you hate, right? And all urban facility, much bigger, uh, let's say, bigger uh, scale of the so-called uh, build environment, okay? And actually in Japan, they, they promote such a, let's say, so-called uh, house, house in Japan, to, to, uh, 21, and uh, uh, fully, no, heavily influenced by the concept of health city movements proposed, uh, let's say, have been promoted since 19, 1980, I think, okay? So this is, uh, let's say, the causality involved in health with quality life, okay? But then the, how we can capture such a, uh, let's say, complex causality depending on the mega city and depending on, for example, uh, let's say, uh, local city, the connections between causality, a connection or cause effect relationship between these elements, very different. And you can find out those, uh, let's say, uh, these are uh, some results I, I uh, figured out uh, derived based on very simple uh, structure visual model, and also uh, let's say supported by uh, some decision tree regulation uh, methods. Okay, so that this is this is one uh, approach. Another one, uh, say uh, I mentioned about the the healthy uh, uh, city one uh, project I have been involved is actually uh, in Japan Ministry of. Uh, uh, let's say uh, welfare, welfare. Uh, this is called a uh, uh, and uh, like a anyway education. Sorry, a healthy uh, promotion uh, uh, government sector. And we we are. Uh, I'm. Uh, I was required to uh, look at how the built environment, including transport, affect elderly people's health not actually mental health, not social, but the physical health. Because uh, let's say elderly people, they have some, they have a daily uh, kind of, uh, 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 some often, they often visit a hospital uh, because they are concerned, concerned about their maybe potential health issues. But actually that's a problem. So these some results, we're using some uh, spatial, uh, like uh, uh, analyzing modeling approach to look at uh, the impact of different type of built environment indicators, human mobility on the health outcome. Their health kind of condition. You can you can image any kind of condition, no problem, it's fine. But just to show you this is how, uh, especially I think if you like uh, some modern approach, you can look at what's mean uh, multi-scale. GWR means uh, geographically weighted uh, regular model. So you can actually estimate it uh, heterogeneous uh, influence of different uh, in, in, uh, indicator on the health outcome. And one more actually, uh, let's say research uh, in this context, it's got a data health plan. Uh, also, uh, uh, it's a government in initiative actually, and I'm also very happy to be involved, heavily involved actually. And this is, a, 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 so they, they try to say, based on the so-called uh, digital technology. So another uh, example, uh, in Japan, uh, uh, I think all Japanese people, including myself, I'm living there, I'm not Japanese, I'm Chinese, but my living there, all the residents live in Japan, uh, we have a, a health card. This card actually uh, registered uh, in the, some system. When I, when I do some uh, health check, <clears throat> it will be automatically rest in the system, then they can share it by the uh, government. But it's not already open to everybody, and I'm happy to be involved. Then I have a authority to access the data, very detailed, including your personal check, your health uh, medical uh, check uh, record, your uh, health habit, uh, lifestyle, like a time use, drinking, smoking, 
movement, sleeping, whatever, so as a major cell. And also uh, some, uh, this is also connected with uh, personal uh, location, detail location, that we actually know the build environment. So we can see that the, uh, everything about uh, people's house is, is here. This, this is, uh, this is a graph in the right side represents so deep development at a personal level, actually. Why uh, Japanese government try to do such a, let's say, so detailed uh, individual-based uh, uh, intervention is because actually in Japan, this is one, uh, let's say, uh, uh, data. For some cities, I think it's very common. For example, 5% of other people, they spend more than about 40% budget for health. Actually, many of them don't actually need to go to the hospital. Because just, they, are, they just look here and say, I feel a little bit uh, concerned that they go to the hospital. Then you spend, uh, let's say, medical insurance budget. The can't want to identify the person A, B, C, D individually. Based on such identification, you can target each person and directly contact them and intervene. For example, uh, because of my this age, and uh, I as, uh, three years ago, I think I was uh, contacted by the the interest. Say, I want to, because you feel like have some a little bit fat, you do better to pay more attention to your health. They want to give me advice. They contact me, then I should receive some advices. This is one of the in initiatives. But uh, unfortunately, I'm not so so old. But uh, those old uh, people, they literally spend so much money. They would identify those people. Then what we have done, so I just I cannot show the detail. Actually, we 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 try to apply the the, the deep learning approach to try to uh, predict who is actually more risky than other people and who are not. But they they actually go to the hospital. Then we can provide them some additional services instead of going directly to hospital, etc. Such a okay then. Then, generally speaking, then you can uh, position, for example, the people's health uh, linked with uh, lifestyle, community, to nature, etc. It's quite big, uh, let's say, uh, sorry, actually. This is one uh, uh, kind of a key component uh, of factors in affecting people's health. I don't want to talk with you. And there are so many, uh, let's say, actions uh, needing to improve the health. For, as a people in transport, I think we may be in here, to create physical environments that are supportive to health, healthy choices. But also, also and depending on uh, uh, which part you're interested, this is again, uh, let's say, proposed by w, uh, WHO. And uh, more generally speaking, uh, these years we, we have been uh, promoted, especially in my uh, program, previously I, I, I served as a chair, I proposed uh, through our program to look at more general uh, plant, plant health. Plant health actually is a total health of human being, uh, every personal, personal uh, say individual, individual person, society, and nature. It's kind of a joint, uh, integrated, uh, let's say, health. So we need to put them together in the same table and to see how we can uh, improve not only the person, but also the society and also uh, nature. And second one, energy. Energy actually, so uh, every day uh, we are staying at home, we spend, uh, let's say, using air conditioner and using whatever uh, electronic energy, I mean, electricity is uh, uh, consuming, uh, let's otherwise mean devices. So we spend all time at, uh, at home, at office now, for example, in, in my case, go to restaurants, uh, to other, let's say, active whatever, then you spend the money outside. And uh, energy, sorry. So this is one actually, uh, let's conceptual framework looking at how to understand any assumption for people, for households. You can see that we have a wife, a husband, how they spend their time, uh, let's say, all time across space. Then how we can understand their behavior based on sort of activity uh, based. But uh, in my case, this is very, let's say, uh, let's say more data based. But in my, uh, in my case, I try to understand the life oriented because for those, only ownership 
of some, let's say, uh, let's say car, big horses and electric, uh, let's say, devices actually, uh, it's not only for linked, some long-term durable, uh, let's say, uh, purchasing, actually spend some money, more a uh, big budget than actually linked, a uh, little bit uh, long-term maybe uh, life aspects. And for household and exemption, uh, in is uh, the this is the whole component. Say we, where you live, do you own some cars or some motorcycle and what type of in-home uh, uh, appliance? How you spend your time? How you spend, when you spend your time, how you spend, use those uh, car and also uh, in-home appliances. Those are connected uh, as exemption. So in-home also actually is uh, not independent, but actually quite connected. Even within uh, home, those activity appliances also linked together. This is very complicated in uh, less connected because of life-oriented energy consumption, uh, demanding system. Okay. Then we, we have actually example, just example looking at how to understand the, the intra-household uh, intra interaction when spending uh, time, let's say money related to the energy, we need to answer how they share different household members within the same household. They share the sources of time and also uh, money. Okay? Then when you think about how the different member decided to sing together, then for example, this is one example of how we can define the house utility by reflecting, uh, let's say, members, each member utility and also the interacted utility, interaction between members. And for the, sorry, then for uh, each individual member, you need to decide it's, uh, your own time spent, uh, use and money uh, expenditure, right? Then you also need to think about the connection between the interaction between uh, different activity in terms of uh, time and the money. Then, and then uh, for uh, each, you can further let's look at uh, for, uh, uh, we define uh, the one individual, uh, let's say, uh, uh, utility, you need to think about the, they say, uh, the, your preferences for time use and money, money or any example different, right? Then you also need to think about connection between the, the energy or money consumption, uh, let's say, related to different activities. Because you have limited time, you have limited money, right? And these actually uh, interactions uh, uh, can, uh, if you put them together and uh, uh, quite looks complicated, but uh, uh, we can actually measure such an uh, interaction uh, based on the so-called uh, multilinear utility function. That's one example, anyway. I just, uh, you can see here the, the activity connected with in-home and out-home also look at the interactions. And uh, one other example, say, if you look at the, let's say, uh, where you live, uh, how you uh, spend your different, uh, let's say, uh, type of an example, we can actually uh, make use of uh, so-called advanced uh, choice modeling approach by looking at the, the decision connection between the different uh, type of decision, here's a resident location, and uh, there's an exemption, uh, different type of an exemption. So this is, uh, I, because uh, this is quite a complicated uh, modeling approaches, I just give them names, say uh, how uh, this approach actually can reflect the uh, decision-making processes, mechanism, and also uh, looking, especially reflecting people's heterogeneities in such decisions. And this uh, actually, I mentioned about the very complicated and uh, consumption both demanding systems. We actually developed, uh, developed such a, uh, let's say, a similar system by, by connecting all these type of, uh, different type of decisions. Then here, for example, we can reflect the those systems uh, by connecting with technological improvement, uh, let's say, uh, policy and uh, soft policy, how to change people's behavior uh, from their uh, sort of psychological perspective, and how to, uh, let's say, link uh, land use policy, then how to reflect the social demographic changes like uh, the elderly aging population and changing uh, in more population structure, et cetera. 
the, how to look at the technological diffusion in the market, how to reflect connection between people, for example, as a whole system actually we uh, develop such a uh, simulation. And uh, I think we, we, in, we are uh, in China, we are facing some uh, new challenges, especially under the so-called uh, uh, new urbanization policy. And some years ago, we, we do some research to get how to capture, how to understand social problem related to rural migrant worker associated associated with energy consumption. It's also actually a life oriented approach. And related to the transport and energy, actually, for example, uh, three years, three years ago, I published one book. I think again, it's the first book in transport and energy uh, context to link the two together based on the so-called uh, life only approach and to capture, to try to review all, not only the in, uh, individual housing, but also industry, like uh, air, airline, tourism, all there. And to uh, link, to understand how we can uh, capture uh, those energy uh, transport uh, ne nexus connection to uh, this is some uh, one uh, by reviewing and based on our own research, by reviewing a lot of uh, literature, we found out some very useful uh, policy suggestions. These are our 21 uh, policy suggestions. You can see that uh, how to pack different policies, how to understand how to make use of behavior intervention to change people behavior, then how to make use of uh, pricing and uh, how to amend the city boundary how to promote the let's say pedestrian friendly let's say city uh, planning and how to let's say build some uh, uh, scientific uh, modeling system to support such a let's say cross sector decision making and how to understand we are very bad we are very bad at actually understanding behavior for many stakeholders we understand an individual but we must for example firms government sectors those key persons' behavior don't understand. We need such a research. And this is another, actually, uh, because we're talking about the, uh, let's say, carbon neutralization, a carb carbon peak, uh, let's say, policy in China. And uh, just uh, uh, so, uh, from last year, I proposed one uh, framework to capture how, to, I think, uh, in theory, uh, if we can, uh, well, design of policy by targeting these six domains, looking at the process management based on these six steps. We gotta detect, inform the event, react, enlighten, enforce, evaluate, cooperate, and transfer. It's all related to the whole process of, uh, let's say, uh, management in any type of pro uh, policy making. But here we're looking at the uh, carbon energy and especially emphasizing collaboration between different stakeholders, how to detect different people, different stakeholders, energy consumption behavior, inform them to change, depending on different te technologies, whatever policy, by targeting different domains, looking at, uh, let's say, uh, carbon intensity, energy consumption, transport, let's say, activity, uh, uh, let's say the fundamental activities deriving transport, like a life economy activity, lifestyle, business style, and also population. This is all actually related to the uh, carbon uh, uh, emission from an assumption in different sectors. So this, uh, let's say one, uh, we got a, I define as a, a direct approach for the process management and carbon identity. So with uh, uh, six domain and six step step. So if we can fit in these 36 cell, these metrics, in theory, we can resolve problem in theory. But I think it's quite important, quite difficult, but we, we need a lot of efforts in, in this regard. Uh, next one, AI driven city. I just want to, uh, uh, let's say, give uh, uh, everybody know we using smartphone, uh, let's say, app in different lab domains, right? Everybody saw the travel and uh, searching, healthcare, even I, I heard about some example, you are smart meter, you can monitor your, uh, let's say, energy consumption at home. And you can search for 
uh, traveling, right? And education, learning, let's say, the, some knowledge from online resources, for example. We have used these smart smartphone apps to support our life, many, in many sense. And those lives actually, uh, uh, because of the, let's say, use of such a uh, technology, have changed. To some extent, I don't know how big, but I, I think uh, uh, everybody uh, more or less affected, but I think some people may be largely affected by such a, uh, let's say, smart phone apps for their life, especially for young people. Right? Uh, these some, let's say, connections we detected from, uh, let's say, again, a nationwide online survey about Japanese people, how they how they make use of different type of uh, like smartphone apps to uh, support their life decisions, activities. These are some just connections based on some mining approach. And another, let's say, approach I really know, uh, say uh, we need to promote the uh, AV, uh, autonomous, autonomous vehicles, and such uh, to understand whether people, uh, yes, we know the technology, but we need more and more people to make use of technology. But whether people use or not, we need to capture their preferences and future intention. Then we can make use of uh, some survey uh, methodology, so called a, a stated preference survey, SP survey, or stated choices survey, SP survey or SC survey. So we define, uh, we try to capture uh, in our group, we capture such a, let's say, uh, preferences for Japanese people and re reflecting their actual behavior, actual daily uh, life choices. And we, we, we define, uh, let's say, using some, uh, uh, by defining some scenarios about the vehicle itself, about how we could change their, their life. And by reflecting such a, let's say, uh, marketing, uh, let's say, uh, mechanism, re reflecting uh, really to the pricing cost, et cetera, example. Then we can uh, show some scenario and allow people to make a choice by reflecting based on their own preferences. Okay. And we have also uh, can capture, for example, uh, when people use uh, AV, self driving vehicle or autonomous vehicle. What they want to make use of time during the, during the travel using the car, because you don't need a driver car, you can just sit like this. Then you can sleep, you can read a book if you like, and you can also do something, something else. So what, how people try to use the time you doing uh, let's say uh, vehicle vehicle as a moving office, moving home, moving hotel some. You can see that all life connected over time. Uh, across space, even during dry, uh, travel, because of the this new technology of AVs or self driving cars. Okay? So, how to capture such things? We also make some efforts based on the approach. Some detailed technology, uh, just uh, some kind of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, techniques, is just a mixed logic model and uh, reflecting the choices and reflecting the people's uh, different preferences, taste. About different factors affecting the behavior. And then we, we truly identify some changes. So people we, we ask them, okay, if the EV available to your life, what would you like to change? What do you expect is some change in your life? Like you can uh, live further further from the like, city center, because it's expensive, right? We can, you can increase more, maybe some uh, long term, uh, let's say, uh, distant travel. Because you, need to, you don't need to feel some tired of driving, etc. Right? Such a behavior, such a uh, intended intention, expected behavior change also affect choices. We also, uh, let's say, capture such a, uh, influences, and uh, we are trying to submit some journals. And the bigger one, these bigger, let's say, uh, some, let's say, uh, part represent the larger influence of expected life changes in future. So uh, we introduce also, let's say, pricing cost, price information, but actually in comparing with, with uh, let's say, traditional uh, factors, life-oriented factors, much more important. Same, same. And actually, so, uh, I uh, just uh, uh, submit one, uh, let's say, uh, paper last year to some new a new journal uh, called a computational, uh, let's say, urban science 
I mentioned about how to make use of such a computing AI supported technology to our, uh, let's say, policy making. I mentioned about this very important how to, uh, let's say, make a data driven uh, solution to overcome delays because we have some delays in SDGs proposed, proposed by United Nations, right? Sustainable Development Goals. We have so many, let's say, uh, let's say, uh, digital divide issues, social exclusion issues, dilemmas caused by e-society. We need to capture the behavior code changes. I mentioned about that because life connected. For looking at post pandemic recovery process, then we need to uh, propose some, let's say, methodology to reflect such a, let's say, challenges and to manage the process of policy making for uh, such a, let's say, uh, city urban planning south. And, uh, okay. So you can give us some uh, your own uh, kind of uh, let's say definition about AI cities, and uh, uh, to try to uh, uh, talk more about what we need such a research. Resilient. So because of time, I need to speed up. Resilient. Uh, basically, I have done uh, resilient re research. Uh, first, uh, I of course uh, it's kind of a different uh, order. And uh, recently, I, I'm looking at uh, pandemic. Before, I think uh, traffic accident also related to the, uh, let's say, resilience. Uh, transport accident research actually is part of uh, public health research, actually. In our transport field, we talk about transport aid, engineering issues, but uh, in general speaking, we talk about public health, natural uh, disaster, and also social inclusion. Uh, really, the pandemic I mentioned about, that, I think we'll skip this one. Uh, this is one the application of the LIBOR approach to capture the comprehensive let's say, changes caused by, uh, uh, let's say, uh, COVID-19. I see the first case to capture. You can see the all these, uh, let's say, uh, lines, the, the graph, a different uh, lines showing different activity, uh, uh, life activity. activity. And, uh, and so this, uh, I think, is the first case. And, but uh, especially in the initial state of pandemics. And uh, another, let's say, uh, actually in my group just this year, one student will graduate soon in this September. She uh, come from China, and uh, she uh, will be the, I think one of the first uh, doctor students, uh, let's say targeting uh, COVID-19 research in the context of urban transport or maybe mobility research. So this is her, let's say, uh, topic. And you can see uh, she have a, a say, uh, her thesis dissertation uh, includes eight chapters the, the the key uh, four chapters actually looking at the, the virus spread mechanism and the policy uh, packaging during the pandemic because we need to balance between the pandemic control and uh, maintain the economic activities and how to look at urban recovery because eventually we need to get off of in the uh, let's say try to survive from the pandemic and how to recover right from the pandemic and based on the so-called big data, Multi source of big data, massive data, you can make, maybe, and also deep learning approaches. Because uh, we have uh, so many unknowns, we try to make use, in her cases, try to make use of exploratory approach to just directly look at data and to see how we can derive some new findings different from traditional less approach and uh, based using those uh, so called uh, deep learning approaches. And also, for example, we are looking at how to balance between the pandemic and the control and the economic activity. We uh, make use of a seasonal approach. It's quite old fashioned approach, but I think quite useful for looking at such uncertain events. And some new books uh, we uh, soon published. Uh, one book uh, we published this month, two more books I'm editing actually, uh, will be published next year. Uh, accidents. I just uh, want to uh, skip this one. So we develop, we develop some uh, uh, app, a smartphone based app actually uh, being awarded as the best uh, scientific papers by the uh, 21st, 21st uh, ITS World Congress. And it's very simple. I think, uh, uh, let's say, smartphone app, we can uh, uh, diagnose drivers second by second safety and provide some devices and uh, judge their 
uh, driving uh, habits and uh, provide some uh, warning, uh, let's say information and give them advice how to improve their traffic safety. Others, uh, we also apply some big data to try to, uh, let's say, detect some risky behavior and to support their, uh, let's say, support traffic safety policy. Resilient actually, we are actually looking at, uh, let's say, the some uh, climate disasters. In this case, uh, this is uh, Bangladesh. We have published some papers, but again, based on the life approach, to look at how people can adapt to climate disasters due to the, uh, uh, let's say, flooding, due to the river and rise of, uh, let's say, sea level, and to, to try to adapt their, uh, let's say, residential location, job, uh, school, et cetera. For social exclusion, we're looking at uh, how to address as also, uh, let's say, people in disadvantaged uh, regions, and those people, uh, let's be called socially poor people. We've got a transport poor people and low income people, all those people in some developing country, for example. We propose some uh, ideas how to capture life oriented social exclusion and to address, uh, let's say, uh, cross sector policy making. A lot of issues. And, uh, Related to, to the resilient sample, how to pre prepare the, 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 the such a issues, the how to reduce initial damages, how to mitigate further damages during the process once we know the damages, then how to recover from for a better future. So, for example, in pandemic, we are suffering a lot from COVID 19. We have to be, uh, let's say, uh, careful, realize, yes, we need to change many things about our life, about our economic system about our transition example, for, for a better life in the future. And these some um, uh, process management, I will skip this one. And, uh, and for tourism, I have a two more uh, talk and just quickly give some kind of a thought. As a city, even though it's not divided for tourism, but as a city, it should be attractive to tourists. So I did some research on uh, tourism, uh, let's say, like uh, in this way. So we talk, we talk about, about the, uh, tourism, I think, especially related to the urban tourism. And in this context, in this uh, lecture, in the, we're talking about transport, but even we have a regional tourism also. And we can, if you look at the, the whole decision-making system for tourism, we need to understand to whether people go for the travel or not. If they go, where to go, how to go by different type of modes, including transport, of course, travel party, going together with whom, what activity to do to perform, and how to make uh, use of their time, how to spend money, and how they feel about the travel, tourism, satisfaction, right? And such an actually, uh, they, uh, behavior change over time. They're linked together. For example, if you have a future airplane to, to come to Japan, for example, you will not let's say, uh, take a travel this year because you have a plan. And similarly, even for your, let's say, domestic travel, if you have a plan next month, go to sample Guangzhou, you say, okay, today, this month, I will not go. So future also expectation also affect, future expectation or future plan also affect our current behavior. So it's quite the like, dynamic, uh, let's say, spatially, temporary uh, dynamic system. Then we should say, for example, we, we can make use of uh, such a, let's say, nested logic model, capture the decision, joint decision of participation and destiny choice, mode choice, for example, and especially change over time. We can also use some, let's say, latent class uh, modeling approach to reflect uh, the different choice structure related to the destination and trial party, for example. We can also say, uh, let's say, to capture the tourist, tourist scheduling behavior. So how to arrange my activity over time across space. And uh, so in this context, we actually developed a, a new type of choice model called MPCL, uh, MPCL model. So nasty type of, uh, let's say, uh, PCL model. Again, to look at uh, the connection between different layer of choices and also looking at the connection between the choice, the same choice layer. In this case, destination or uh, let's say, let's say uh, root choice, right? And also these choices 
linked with time use and timing choices. So, and another say I mentioned about timing. We also propose how to make use of a timing utility concept to capture the joint decision about timing for different activities over the whole days, or even whole weeks, whatever. This is not doesn't matter actually. And the time we call the resource decision. For tourists, we have two types of resources. So the money and the, uh, and the time. And the how to make some utility by reflecting such a, let's say, uh, let's say uh, preferences for different ty uh, type of time uses and also different, let's say, uh, money spent on different purposes, right? So when we put them together as a whole utility, say the tourists want to decide to make, maximize the utility, uh, conditional on the available time and, and risk money, for example, that we, we can actually capture such a, a, a mechanism. Especially, we can also reflect, uh, say, the some similarity across uh, choices and also uh, space. And there's some, let's say, uh, technical terms you skip this path. Then we can actually uh, systematically capture such a complicated, uh, uh, let's say, mechanism in a, as a whole. We can especially, I think, if you are, especially for Professor Chen, if you are familiar with the choice, I think so. Especially when you get the choices, we want to capture that we call these are very popular multiple uh, discrete can you choice it. Normally it's uh, one by one, which is one choice, you have one discrete choice, you have one uh, can you choices. But in reality, for example, in this case, you choose the destination, you decided how to spend the time and also money. You have two continuous choices. Such choice we cannot capture by the popular some MDCV model sample. But we developed some model based on the copula for example. So look at the uh, uh, very complicated, but it's very flexible. And just the one uh, kind of example. Last, uh, so then, then, then because uh, I mentioned about so that, then we, 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 how to attract tourism. So when we build the cities, we need to, uh, to make our city attractive first to local residents. That's the first. More uh, important than anything else. So first, red, local residents should like our cities. In this case, we are showing some uh, photos by, you know, uh, from some websites, say how our transport actually can help, can uh, form a kind of, uh, uh, let's say, attractive environment. And uh, how we can uh, 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 enhance our urban system to attract tourism, also. Right. So this is the one we, we should think about. I, I show the the, the middle uh, photo. The, it's Nanjing actually, a very beautiful river. Uh, let's say base. Uh, let's say city environment example. And last, uh, but of course we have lots of problems actually, and how to especially reflect the daily transport and tourism transport, the conflict between them. That how to let's say uh, uh, optimize such a mixed traffic, and especially for tourism, we how to let's say uh, manage the short term uh, transport to facilitating uh, their uh, movement across sports. And uh, so last one. Very quickly, and uh, and this called the EMU. It's looking at it's not my business actually because I'm I'm not good in I'm not good at design, but actually we've done research to look at uh, how to capture some feelings about environments based on some let's say architecture and psychology approaches. Uh, this I'm afraid I, I, I was, uh, I say, invited to do this and uh, in the context of the Laos uh, EDR and in the capital city, Bianche. And we actually apply the so called, uh, let's say, uh, SD, uh, uh, semantic uh, different, differentiated uh, approaches combined with uh, uh, capital approaches to, 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 to ask people to talk about their feeling. For the typical uh, images about cities, streets, scape. And uh, then, based on that, we, we can, based on some measurements, we can, based on this very complicated, uh, let's say, psychological measurements, we can actually, uh, let's say, build some uh, uh, quantitative modeling approach to capture how 
different components of the CZ street scheme related to the assessment of feeding. Then we can actually, by looking at the collections, we can design, say, oh, we, if we, we remove those early, ugly, right? Ugly is this, uh, those uh, cables and uh, some uh, unsweet sample, uh, the, the, some shock. Then how well people feel better? We can quantify. This is another example. This is uh, the, the key uh, streets by moving those, uh, let's say, on street car parking and those bicycle and garbage example. How the city look at? We can quantify. Actually, it's, uh, even though I'm not the field, but uh, we we surely have done some like uh, research. Like we also do some research on cross border mobility along the Mekong River. This is my actual project, my personal project. Looking at how they say the the place sense of place connected to the perceptions how you feel about how you attach mentally, spiritually, for example, attach place, place attachment, how you derive some identity from the place. Okay. Then these are actually that we can also capture such a connection, how those uh, sense of place linked to the quality of life and eventually linked the intention to long to permanently reside in the city so i just skip the some parts and actually these are uh, some let's say uh some images actually i i i, I uh, from my the photo that i took during my my visit to germany it's for the southern part of german cities if you look at those environments actually quite human center uh design for urban environment how to make uh, uh let's say put people in the center and how to let's say uh, make a city more attractive to local people as also when as a tourist when I visit the city also uh, I feel very good, right? I think this is a kind of uh, image smart design or use of transport uh, or urban space to attract to make our city more uh, say uh, people feel more attached. It's a uh, uh, yearning yearning kind of uh, let's say makes it more yearning for people. That's one. And so this uh, is uh, the whole picture. I think uh, uh, I talk something uh, from the from people's perspective. Actually, every path linked to many many engineering, uh, let's say, issues related to the infrastructure, related to technology, related to the system, and how we can put them together and make city more attractive. Then people may feel more harder, hearty than than before. Then this is uh, as I mean uh, in my sense. Hardy city is uh, as this hardy is, it is a uh, one uh, uh, let's say even though it's a one uh, English name, but actually we can decompose this hardy uh, let's say rules into different components. You can have your own kind of hardy, but uh, eventually I think uh, this concept quite uh, let's say nice. Uh, in the sense we we I mentioned about we the better be uh, more but much kinder to people to nature. And these are some of the details, approaches, how we can become more kinder to nature, to people. I think this is the end of, uh, let's see, my, uh, my slides. This is actually uh, my life and some surrounding environments. It's quite actually beautiful. Hope sometime you can come visit, you're welcome. Thank you very much. So uh, I took a little bit long and I hope you can, uh, let's have questions I can answer. Thank you.